As we come on the air, Sri Lanka is a rudderless ship. In the face of an economic crisis, the president seemed to be working in a silo. His entire cabinet has deserted him. The prime minister desperately trying to keep things together. The parliament is more interested in complaining and complaining while showing whose fault was this and whose fault was that. But some are floating the idea of trying to be president through unlawful means, preceding the democratic process. The very same jokers who called to keep a presidential election is now mums the word on that. And on top of that, a bunch of Sri Lankans are in the streets creating havoc because they can. And instead of finding a real solution to the real crisis, everyone is in their own world, heading towards another disaster little by little. And the rest of the world seems to be enjoying the show. The Sri Lankan governing coalition has lost its majority in parliament after more than 40 MPs belonging to various coalition partners walked out of the governing alliance amid growing unrest over an economic crisis. A few moments ago, the street lights went. People are waving their phones in the air for light. As the demands for the government to step down increase, President Gotabe Rajapaksa has called on all political parties to join efforts to solve the crisis. Sri Lanka is facing its most serious economic and political crisis in decades. It seems like that no one seems to care. Our leaders today are scouting for other leaders. The very people whom we elected to govern this nation, be it the SLPP, the SLFP, the UNP, the SJB, the JVP, the TNA, or anyone with any kind of letters within the parliament. They were sent to the nation's highest office to solve problems, find solutions, take this country on the right path, and be leaders, the representatives of the people. Right now, you have jokers who are playing the game called passing the buck. Whilst I can leave the opposition and the rest of the clowns who are not uh, in the governing party um, aside, mainly because the people didn't give them a mandate to govern, I really cannot look the other way on how our governing party is acting. It's shameful to say the least. At a time of crisis, the way the ruling party acts like cowards is an unsettling sight to see. ಹರ್ಷ <laughs> Oh yes, Dr. Harsha De Silva, the same self-proclaiming economic guru who took this country from a 7% GDP growth to 2% during the Yahapal debacle, who actually gave advice. He was not the finance minister, but he was uh, in the capacity of economic policy advisor to that government. So what's his qualifications to lead this nation at a time of crisis? Let alone him failing to do anything during a time when the country was absolutely fine. I mean... Everyone seems to be working as if they've forgotten the Yahapalne debacle, even parts of our own channel. But I can't act like an Im uh, imbecile and support the very same person who helped in getting us to a weaker state to face this crisis. The balance sheet we inherited from 2015 onwards till 2019 was a balance sheet that had immense problems. That's the national balance sheet. It had a, a debt to GDP, yeah. which is quite significant. It's estimated now, as per the Minister of Finance annual report, to be around 92% of GDP. We have a fiscal deficit of about 8.5%, uh, despite the many uh, uh, yeah. uh, euphoric uh, 
clauses around the primary surplus that we had, but still we had a fiscal deficit of eight and a half. So that becomes a, a big question as to you know what fiscal surplus is all about, primary surplus is all about. That's a that's a different debate. Then we had also a, a huge balance of payments crisis that was brewing because we had a significant amount of debt yeah. which was maturing in 2020 and 2021. Listen, when the people of this country go to the polling booths to elect leaders, they are not electing leaders for the good times of this nation. Instead, they elect leaders whose only duty is to ensure that this country is given proper leadership and carried on the right track, especially in times of uncertainty. We don't call them leaders because uh, they provide clever speeches and entertaining drama during their pres uh, presence in parliament. We call them leaders because they said they were the ones that would take this country to prosperity. <laughs> Right now, the nation is undergoing an unprecedented crisis. Yes, there isn't a rule book nor a guideline to tell you how to act. Just because there's a considerable number of protests on the streets, because there's anger by the public due to their needs, uh, basic needs being not met. And because there's an arduous task at hand, you do not in any way get the right to run away like a bunch of cowards and spineless, scrotumless individuals. When Sri Lanka is faltering and facing a tough stance, you are called to face it bravely and fearlessly. And do your level best to get everyone who has trusted you out of this crisis. What puzzles me the most is on what grounds are you concluding that the mandate was given to you by the people of this nation, 6.9 million of them? Did they tell you that they are no longer with you? Are you basing that on the number of protests mushrooming across the nation? Or did you have any intelligence reports that we are not privy to? That said that the 6.9 million mandate is no longer with you. Don't forget that 5.7 million people voted for the opposing candidate, Sajid Premadasa, and the SJB in both presidential and the parliamentary elections. That's a considerable number too. But what trumps that figure is the 6.9 million voters who overwhelmingly elected you to power. Protest. Screams, shouting, slogans, or social media posts does not warrant as a mandate by the people. It's of course a testament to the quality of your governance. But if we are ever to find the real people's real mandate, it can only be sought via an election, a democratically held election. And until the people of this nation tells you otherwise through an electoral process, you do not get the luxury to chicken out in the face of a crisis. Besides, if you really want to test the powers of the people, go hold the provincial council elections now. That will tell you whether you have a mandate or not. Oh wait. Ah, we can't even do that because we don't have enough money. <laughs> Mirate Janata, Mitram Kitikala Tule Mivagi Kalakiri Maketa Virodi Kateana Tatya at which again. It ikata he to Tino Samara Sadarni Rutino, Samara Palnika and Beri to Tino, if again then Katakirim Palakne, then Kuhumapia Homariapi, Pulwanta Rikmante me Janata Tina Prasna, Visanatoni. I have some tough news for the governing party. You signed up for this. Now get up, grow a pair, and go govern. 
Joining me now is the former Justice and current Finance Minister, President's Council, Ali Sabri. Uh, sir, thank you very much for your time. What's happening to this government, sir? You all sought the power from the people to lead this nation. And exactly at a time of crisis when Sri Lanka desperately needs leadership, you all want to hand it over and run. This is not why people elected you. What's going on in this government? Uh, thank you, Mahesh, for that question. I don't think that we want to hand it over and run. President had very clearly said that he is the president and he will continue to be the president. But we all know that there are people who are on, on the street and there are legitimate grievances on them, particularly the supply chain and the current issues are. So in view of that, some of the political parties and the peop, uh, the, some, of the, some of the supporters of the political parties are also is in the, uh, in, on the street. So in order to uh, kind of get everybody's confidence as a measure, we thought of introducing a, a, a unity government and the president suggested that. I, I don't think that's a, a bad move uh, it, because country comes first above you, above your party and above your party politics. Well, sir, the president is finding it very difficult to appoint a minister to any key position mainly because everyone seems to be quitting. And that's like the latest trend. You did it too. Um, you, you, uh, you quit the cabinet. You're basing the decision on an overwhelming number of protests with a catchy phrase across the country. I mean, have you all done any kind of internal re uh, research or uh, some kind of a report uh, or at least call for an intelligence report, which apparently told you that the 6.9 million mandate that was given to you is no longer with you? Are you also, I mean, afraid of protests? Running away like cowards, disrespecting the mandate initially given to you? Because how can anyone in this country ever have faith in you in the future if this is how you guys are going to act amidst a crisis? No, it's not so. It's basically, uh, you are absolutely correct, <coughs> Mahesh. Uh, it's not that the 6.59 million people are getting into the street. There are people, but we must also concede the fact that there are uh, legitimate grievances to them. So we can be uh, um, kind of uh, not sensitive to that. We have a fuel crisis, we have an electricity crisis, and therefore people are agitating. That is true. But I don't think they are agitating as it is portrayed by certain media and certain people to get the entire government to go home and give it to somebody else and what is the next step and that is why it, we all thought that we should have a fresh um, impetus to that by getting different parties and different leaders coming in and working as a unity government. But as you say very correctly, nobody is willing to take up that challenge and responsibility. We. We uh, got out of the cabinet not because of we are afraid of our responsibility. In order to give that impetus, in order to give that opportunity to the, uh, the, the president to invite the others also to come and join. If at, at any point in time, if they are not willing to do it, we are not going to shy away from our responsibilities. I, if you listen to me uh, yesterday on the parliament also, I told the same thing. We are not going to uh, take credit um, when everything is going right and we are not going to shun from responsibility when things are not going uh, not right. So therefore, uh, definitely we are there uh, when it comes necessary to give leadership. But uh, it would have been ideal and nice, uh, given the circumstances on the ground situation, if we could have been able to form the unity government. If it is not there, then we have to go to the next uh, available best alternative. Minister, uh, I, I understand the tough situation you are in. So, and I really sincerely hope that the government finds its backbone uh, as soon as possible. Minister of uh, Finance, Ali Sabri, thank you very much. Let's take a short commercial break. On our return, we will tell you how to have a jolly good time.